Hi, I'm Miranda Wright, and this is day 88 of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. And today we're going to repent of the idols in our lives. My friend, today I lay a question before you. Are we bound to idols unaware? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18 says, What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it, the molten image and the teacher of lies, that the maker of his work trusteth therein, to make dumb idols? Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. This passage about idolatry is identifying the sin of people giving more attention to the works of their own hands, which are not living, than to God Almighty, who is alive, who moves and breathes and is willing to speak to you and me daily. So today, my friend, we need to examine our lives and see if we are guilty of this sin, because in God's eyes, it is idolatry. I've heard it said that God has made people to love and things to use, not the other way around. Humans have always had a tendency to worship the works of their own hands while neglecting the humble reverencing of God. When Cain offered the work of his own hands as a sacrifice to God, it displeased God because he knew that Cain was proud of what he had produced. He felt ownership. He felt it was his. He felt it deserved to be noticed. He wasn't worshiping God by laying this thing before him. He was worshiping his own work and expecting God to participate in it. And when God didn't approve, yet was pleased with Abel's obedience to sacrifice something that he loved rather than to present something that he was proud of making, Cain's true prideful colors manifested in a jealous rage, and he slew his brother. He turned against him. He attacked him for it in envy. This pattern persisted throughout biblical times, with countless people, tribes, and nations being brought to ruin through the provoking of God to anger by those more intent to worship the works of their own hands than God. Romans chapter 1 verse 25, among other verses, tells us how poorly God looks on those that choose to worship the creation more than the creator. How much more poorly then must he look on those who worship the creations of the creation than the creator of all? We may not fashion for ourselves statues of men and beasts to bend the knee to and worship, but my friend, I assure you that we still serve idols of wood, stone, silver, and gold. We love the works of our own hands, and we give them first priority in our lives, whether we realize it or not. Today, we come to recognize the sin of idolatry that has crept in to every one of us so that we can repent. We put TV before time in the Word. We put Facebook and playing on our phones computers or video games before time with family, loved ones, and even before prayer or communion with God himself. We may not worship graven images anymore, but we do worship digital ones. We idolize fake personas, these images of characters that are laid before us on screens of glass rather than tablets of stone, but it is the same. While God is still calling us to spend time with him, we reject him to spend time with these idols that not only steal our time, service, and attention away from God, but that stand in direct opposition to all that he does and stands for. We make idols of our money, our jobs, our homes, our cars, our professions. We give all of our time, energy, and devotion to all the things made by the 
hands of men, knowing that it will amount to nothing to the end, and even in this present time it will not satisfy, so that no matter how much we pour into this, we will ever be seeking for more stuff. We are ever looking for a new idol to fill the emptiness that the last one left. We are a creation longing for communion with its creator, yet too busy trying to be him, to seek him, that we might see him. Just like in our opening verse, we worship the idols built by our own hands, while God stands alone in silence, in the empty and quiet places, in the churches, in the houses of God. No one seeking him, no one reverencing him, no one willing to lay the idols down and talk with him. Let us commit today to reverence God and to make him our first priority. Let us honor and cherish his calling to us. Let us hunger and thirst for time with him above all other things. Let us serve him with our whole hearts, desire and devotion. Let us want nothing more than to want him, to not place anything before our time with him or to serve anything that opposes him from this day forward. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God, and set your affections on things above, not on the things of this earth. Because Jesus himself said in Matthew 16 verse 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man be given in exchange for his soul? My friends, such an insult before the Lord God Almighty when we place the works of our own hands before the God who created us. We are the work of his hands and we ought to give him the attention and adoration that he deserves daily. David Wilkerson would often say that if you don't think your TV is an idol, why does all of the furniture in your house face it? Why do you eat before it? Why do you give it your focus? Now I think it's a little more prominent in the cell phones and the social media and the YouTube and the Netflix, the iPads, the idols of stone and glass. In the Jewish culture, the dinner table was the most important time that the head of the household would come and commune with his family and with his servants, those who were under him, his disciples even, and teach them. They would talk about the things of the day because they labored so much. This was the time where they fellowshiped, where they communed. This is why Jesus was always saying, I stand at the door and knock. If you open it, I will come in and sup with you. He was saying, I will come in and visit with you. I will talk to you. I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will disciple you. But the home is not being discipled anymore by the fathers. It's being discipled by the idols because that we sit before the idols and give them all of our attention and adoration. The fathers are not being discipled by the father because everybody is so focused on the idol. We can make anything an idol in our life, our career, our money, our manicured yards, our families, our children, our spouses, anything that comes before God, we make an idol. But I think that our greatest sin and probably the one that hurts him the most is when we leave him standing there in silence to give our devotion to something that is not even alive. The things which have no breath, no ruach, no Holy Spirit. And yet we spend so much time willing to hear it and so little time willing to seek the Lord God Almighty that we might hear from him. He misses his children and his children are missing his plans for them because they're not taking time to seek him. So Lord, today we repent of the idolatry in our own lives. God, I pray that you prick our hearts
expose the compromise that you pour in conviction lord each one of us we ask that you pierce our heart in a physical tangible way that we can feel it every day when we put these idols before you that we would recognize them and repent of them that we would not leave you standing silent that we would not neglect your house or your presence for the things that have no breath in them for these idols for these personas father we repent as a nation for embracing the concept of the american idol that it is okay to embrace that which has brought damnation upon your very nation the one that you call the apple of your eye so many times the pride of thinking that it was okay to embrace idolatry brought judgment upon Israel. So who do we think we are to make light of such a sin that we would embrace the concept of American idols in our homes and even in our churches? Lord, show us how vile this is to you and how it breaks your heart. Oh God, we repent. We did not realize, but today we see it and we commit to repent and correct it. Paul said that no good soldier entangles himself in the things of this world, that he might please the one who has chosen him to be a soldier. Lord, help us to remember that we are ambassadors of Christ on a mission, that this world is not our home. It is our mission field and that we have to focus on the task at hand because the time is short. In the blink of an eye, we will look back and say, where did the years go? Did I accomplish what I was sent here to do? Because we were all sent for a purpose for such a time as this. God, you never tolerated the worship of idols. And Jesus, you called for a people of self-denial. You say, pick up your cross, deny yourself the lust of your flesh, the desires of your heart to not allow ourselves to be ruled by our belly, by our desires to be pulled by the impulses of pleasure. You call a people who are willing to sacrifice to get the mission right, to recognize that this life is not our home, that this life is so temporary, that there's a purpose in it in positioning us for eternity. But it is not for our pleasure. It is for your purposes, our training, to see if we will be faithful in the little things, to determine whether or not you can make us ruler over much in eternity. Lord, I want to take it seriously because this isn't about me. This is about your kingdom. So I choose to lay down the idolatry and I pray for conviction when it starts to grab hold of me. I pray for you to show me and never let me get comfortable with it. I pray for you to shake me and wake me when it begins to grip me. I pray for you to put the bit in my mouth and direct me. That I might ever be drawn to your presence where you can equip me for the mission of which I have been positioned in this world. Lord, I thank you that we are all sent and today we commit to take the mission seriously. That we might complete it before time runs out. And we have to stand before you and try to explain why we wasted the time that we were given. Clear the stage and set the sound and the lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation's fueling half revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins You can't be social 
Seek the Lord and wait for what He has in store, and know that great is your reward. So just be hopeful, 'cause you can sing all you want to. Yes, you can sing all you want to. You can sing all you want to, and still get it wrong. Oh, worship is more than a song. Take a break from all the plans that you have made, and sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper. Beg him, please, to open up his mouth and speak, and pray for real upon your knees until they blister. Shine the light on every corner of your life until the pride and lust and lies are in the open. Then read the word and put to test the things you've heard. Till your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken, 'cause you can sing all you want to. Yes, you can sing all you want to. You can sing all you want to and still get it wrong. Oh, worship is more than a song. Anything I put before my God is an idol. And anything I want with all my heart is an idol. And anything I can't stop thinking of is an idol. I can sing all I want to. Yes, I can. Sing all. That's the measure you must take to crush the idols.